Okay, so in order to explain my next goal, I need to a, clean the lens and tell you uh, story. Now the story starts somewhere around the time when I was born. Ever since I was a little toddler, I was drawn to music. So if my parents weren't playing it, I was probably listening to it on the radio. I had my little headphones on. I couldn't even walk, but I was able to put the headphones on and, and just listen to music. When I got a bit older and I was able to hold an instrument and, and grasp what playing music is, I was always playing music. It could be the cello or the trumpet or the piano, uh, the dulcimer. I have pictures, I'll try and post pictures. If I can't find any pictures, I can't put them up here, but most likely I will be able to show you some pictures. Like music became my best friend, music was my outlet, music was always there. By the time I was 11, I was running the school radio and I was playing a cassette a week with music that I curated. So don't think about anything fancy, it was probably like 5 to 10 minutes a day. But I was still doing the school radio. Thank you, Penny. I can clearly recall this happened on the 6th of December 1996. We had a huge snowstorm in the town that I was living and we were walking towards the school that night because we had a, a Christmas party and the, the wall of snow on the pavement was taller than I was at the age of 11 and I really really loved it but I wasn't allowed to go and play in it because I had a much higher calling. It was the first night where I was the DJ. At the age of 11, on a school party, I premiered as a DJ. I remember taking two cassette decks and one mixer and a bag full of pre-recorded cassettes, pre-organized. You didn't have all that, that hot cues and jumps and whatever we have these days. The only way I knew what I wanted to do is I had every song listed and some of you might remember the cassette players, they had a little counter on them and I time-coded the songs to the counter so I could seek in the cassette player, seek in the cassette easily and I knew that, okay, if I want to play this song, I need this cassette at this time code and that would be the song that I chose. So I did the night, I still can clearly remember the first song that I played, that was Fire from Scooter. Now if you're in the US, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. If you are old enough in Europe, then you know what I'm talking about. But for, for those of you who don't, here's a sample. Fire! And this is what I kicked off with. And it's still a very vivid memory. Imagine me as an 11 year old standing there and, and doing it. <clears throat> anyway, that night has absolutely changed my life. Seeing people appreciate what I'm playing and seeing people being happy with the songs and dancing to it, dancing or whatever you call dancing when you're 11, uh, dancing to the songs, it made me pursue this even more. In the following eight years, I became a radio DJ. I had gigs almost weekly, sometimes two gigs a week. And I was pretty, pretty, pretty doing pretty well. I, I usually played trance music, but I hung out with rockers and went to hip hop parties. And I think I even sang in a punk rock band for a while. You know, that's a bit blurry. Uh, but as always, life came in the way and you know, I had to grow up. By the age of 19, 19? By the age of 19, I was 
I moved to a different city. I was living alone, providing for myself, and that work load didn't really allow me to pursue the DJ life. I mean, you can't really show up at work at 8 a.m. when you were playing until 6 a.m. So I had to quit. And then 10 years passed, I think 10 years, and, and I almost completely stopped. The only thing that I was doing as a DJ I made a mix maybe once every two years that got online, some of my friends listened to, some people loved it. That transformed into a habit of me posting those mixes on digitally imported radio and getting really good feedback for it. And if you've ever heard any of my mixes on digitally imported radio and gave a thumbs up to it, thank you very much. That feedback enabled me to do what I'm about to tell you now. mid-2015, I decided that I'm gonna go back to San Francisco, meet some friends that I haven't seen in a couple of years, and just have a really good time. The plan was that I'm going to crash at one of my promoter slash DJ friends. So I called him if I could stay at his place, and then he flipped out saying that, dude, if you're coming to San Francisco, there's no, not a chance that you're not spinning. What? What? I freaked out. I. I really, really freaked out. I haven't played live in 10 years. I have no idea what's popular these days. I have no idea what people listen to. I have no connection to the, the crowd. The crowd has no connection to me. I'm not a famous DJ who just shows up and can play whatever the heck he wants. Um, and uh, it was a terrifying experience. I was really, really shaking just because of the news. So just a little context. His night, my friend's night, is San Francisco's voted best night in San Francisco's voted best club. And he wanted me to play there. And then, then I thought about quitting. I wanted to call him, apologize, thank him for the opportunity and say no. And then I thought that if I quit at that moment, I'm going to hate myself for the rest of my life. I will never again try this and I will never again have this opportunity to play in a really great location and a really great uh, night. So then the night started, so did my set. And somewhere along that three and a half hours that I was playing, something very strange happened. It was like a door within me open and the keys were thrown away, never to be found, and, and you can't close it back in. And the old feeling, that love, that joy, that energy, that adrenaline, that, that everything that music meant for me ever was coming out, bursting out. And here's Dave, hey Dave. So I felt it again. I felt the energy, the love, the everything that music ever meant to me. I remember this scene where I was playing a song and I saw this couple and the girl recognized what song I'm playing and she pushed away her boyfriend and she was mimicking something like, go away, this is my song, leave me alone. And then she spread her arms, started smiling and started singing the lyrics and she had the best time of her life while keeping eye contact with me, signaling that the thanks, the happiness that I am right now causing to her through music. And that, that's a feeling that I felt 10 years ago. That's the feeling that I get from music. And that was the most defying moment in my past. And I, I just have to pursue it. I have to do it more. And that's how this whole theme of music came to life again. It's a zombie theme, I guess, but I can't kill it. I can't stop it. I, I have to pursue it. 
Okay, so the obvious problem with vlogging from a pub and having your friend turn up is that you wake up the next morning with no end to your story and a mild headache. So apologizing for the quick location change and the quick ending of the pub scene, but life happens. Okay, so where was I going with the story? After San Francisco, I realized that I really want to do this. I know that I can't really commit to live performances just yet. It takes up way too much time and I have bigger things in my life that I need to focus on. However, I did want to do this in some form or another. So the big announcement is that beginning this Saturday, like the 20th of February 2016, at 6 p.m. GMT on Digitally Imported Radio's Trans Channel, my new radio show slash podcast will premiere. It's called Intelligent Waveforms, and I'd be really happy if you could join me and listen and comment and give me some feedback on it. <laughs> the most important thing is that, remember that map that I showed you the other day? I am now able to piece in another part of the map, which is the online radio show, and I can move on to the next item, which is creating an original track and releasing it officially. That is on the way already, and hopefully within a month, or maybe two, I can actually reveal what I'm working on, and I can release it and probably premiere it in one of the episodes of my radio show. Also, I haven't had a skateboard under my feet in about 15 years. So I would really, like, the weather's really cool outside, I want to go out and, and practice on the penny board, but I have to edit. So if I can finish the editing quickly and still get some sun, I'll go out and try the penny board. I'm really, really thrilled. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, although there's not much happening. I think there's one more, like next week's episode is going to be another establishing episode about my filmmaking career. But after that, it's going to be a free for all and absolutely going for the goals. The very big things coming up. So, see you next week. Thank you.